Welcome to our number two on Affairs Day on Hashtag Daily K with your host, Peter Bint. How much do you know about K food? How much hanshik have you eaten? We invite you into the world of Korean food. Of course, including the history and culture of it. We'll introduce trendy foods and famous restaurants on Dish of the Day with Chef Ryan. Ryan, don't tell me you're going to do a David Tizard. He's our Monday guest, yeah. and he protested at having to say his own name with David Tizard. So I've taken that over on a Monday, actually. I just got distracted. Sorry, man. I was getting a phone call, and I was worried about the vibration sound, and I just had to turn that off. So and... you're okay saying with Chef Ryan in the future? We can cool, we cool. can negotiate your contract and I, if you don't can, want to say it. I can handle that, yeah. <laughs> Are you okay with saying your own name? Because when I first said Peter a few times and I think it was through broadcasting for some reason or another I found it so awkward yeah, to say weird. that it's yeah. weird it was weird at right. first yeah yeah, yeah definitely. but you're used to it as well sure we've been coming up here now for like I remember with Edwin the very first time was sitting right here you know and and oh, maybe, nice. was it 10 years ago my goodness maybe well it's 2023 it was 2013 2014 when I was doing travel bug yeah. Uh, so it so, must be about that time. Was that close. the show you started on? Yes, it was. Yeah. How did he find you? Good question. Were you on Alidang TV at that time? No, 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 oh, no. Oh, wow. No, I think... Oh, I remember. Is it broadcastable? I was doing a... I was doing a... What was that called? K-Food... K-Food Delight. Uh -huh. It was a government-funded project yeah. where they found chefs... Uh, from all around the world that were here in Korea. Wow. And had us prepare dishes that were Korean, but using a, a main ingredient from another country. Wow. Very similar to Cooking Possible. Okay. But, but it was on one of those boats that don't move around on the Han River, you mm. know, right, yeah. right near the- Those restaurant boat kind of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was a lot of fun. And uh, we we did a big kind of hoopla there, and I guess it was broadcasted a bit. Uh -huh. And then that led to a meeting yeah. Edwin. Yeah, that's what oh, it was. fantastic. Or maybe it was the PDNIM at the time. Uh-huh. And then that led to the show. And then the, and then Cooking Possible, yeah. That's amazing because then you were on Catch the Wave as well, right? Right, right, with Adrian. Yeah. yeah. And then I think that's when our paths crossed after that. Right. Uh, yeah. You were on Nadi Dung TV, so we'd seen some videos and we were starting Daily K and then we got you on board. You had a little hiatus in between and now you're sure, back. It's sure, fabulous. Sure. Yeah. Uh, we love talking about food. I do, I, think, I do. I think everyone loves talking about food all over oh. the world, right? It's just a thing. Well, I can drive people crazy sometimes. <laughs> I have to check myself. <laughs> you don't do that on a Thursday. You drive our listeners crazy in a good way, for sure. Uh, Leon remembering to the What's in Your Fridge segment. Yeah, that day, was fun. We'd yeah. have that in part three. Our listeners would send us whatever they had in their fridge, and Ryan would come up with a recipe. Yeah, I remember Siska used to always give me really tough ones. Though. <laughs> She'd just have some sauces yeah, or some, I don't know, like some beanie weenies or some sauce. I, I was like... <laughs> I was like, what am I, are you, are you punking me right now? Yeah, and you'd still come up with something decent. And I want to say Try this, to. I've not had Ryan agree to this, but I'm going to say it anyway. If you want to send us your ingredients in your fridge from time to time, <laughs> and we got a bit of time at the end yeah. of the segment, Ryan yeah. will be more than happy, yeah. I think. But to just don't send pickles, ketchup. <laughs> A bit of tofu. Uh, some, some processed slice, che cheese slices, <laughs> and I don't know. You yeah. Know. Give him something uh, to work with. Something. Right? Something. That's maybe not processed, right? Uh, before we get too chatty, um, and maybe I'll unleash this on you in hour number two, Kay and Will from Canada have both mentioned Branston Pickles for maybe what's in your fridge later Oh, on. no! <laughs> Do oh, you, no. Have, you, have you had Branston Pickles? No, I'm afraid I haven't. What they're, am I missing out on? They're quite big in the UK. I don't know, because... I wouldn't touch them with a barge pole. They fall under Marmite for me. Like oh. a love-hate thing, which I just don't even want to try. Okay, like, okay. Yeah. So I'll, right. I'll try and get well. some more info from our listeners, and are we'll see. Are they sweet, or are they just like a dill kind of thing? Or? I really have no idea. Please do let me know. They're a big thing on sandwiches in the UK as well, okay. from what I Maybe like remember. a bread and butter. I love a bread and butter pickle on a sandwich. Oh, a bread and butter pickle? Yeah, you never no. seen those? 
What's I think that? the big box stores here not made of selling. bread and butter. Obviously. No, no, no. It's just it's just sweet pickle, and it has oh. some turmeric in it, so it's a little yellow, and and I guess that's where maybe it got it, the butter link. Oh, it's nice. not buttery, of course. Um, but it's a it's a sweeter pickle that's not crazy sweet. Okay, you know? I want to try that on now. a sandwich. Yeah. Uh, today's dish then going on an adventure of hongo. Oh man, like okay. <laughs> You've tried it. I, I, I can't, I'm not even sure I have, to be I, honest, Ryan. I almost brought you. You're so lucky I didn't bring Good. it. Actually, I, I was going to bring it, but then I thought, you know what? Mm. Man, they might not want this. I yeah. mean, because somebody's got to come in here after us. Exactly. And you would, the smell would be here all day. You'd know for uh, sure. Absolutely. Like when I go to Godock Market, if you get anywhere near the guys that are cutting it all up, mm hmm. It, it's strong. Yeah. It's, it is the most pungent Korean food, isn't it? And that is saying something. Because, you know, <laughs> when I was younger, my friends, me included, my dad from time to time, we'd complain about the smell of kimchi in our house. You know, when my mum was when like, making it. When you open the fridge it. door, yeah. And it like, yeah. it gets into the orange juice. It gets into, like, everything has that kind of kimchi-ish. Yeah. I think that's part of the reason we have kimchi fridges, right? Fermenting garlic is a powerful <laughs> thing. And uh, cabbage. But this is hands down more pungent than that. It is. Yeah. It is. And there's a reason for that. And it gets a little gross. Okay. But we're, we're talking about in English. Yeah, skate. skate. Fermented, raw <laughs> skate. Raw fermented skate. Yeah, like we don't even hardly eat skate yes. uh, in the West, let alone raw, let alone fermented raw. <laughs> so, as you so might this... remember, did you watch the drama Suriname? No, I'm afraid I'm not big on drama. Like the basis of that is the guys go out to Suriname to export skate back to Korea because they just throw them away there. Oh, wow. And so they came up with that business idea and Whoa. it boomed. Whoa. And then there's lots of gangster action in it. But that's the oh. premise. And that shows you, you know, just globally, it's not really desired, right? Right. Yeah. A lot of the skate here comes from Chile. And mm. I don't imagine there's a big market for it. I have eaten skate, like cooked kind of like catfish. And it tasted similar to catfish. Of course, it's the same kind of family, the shark the catfish you know mm. um the skate doesn't really have bones it's got cartilage like a shark yeah um, i kind of thought it was a bit similar to what we did a few weeks back maybe a month or two back the agui uh, yeah. monkfish right. monkfish is way nicer i would say but but skate i don't know it kind of reminded me with the cartilage and stuff like that a little bit yeah um i i gotta say you gotta try it at least once in your life hong on. Uh, hong on. Okay. you really do and and why <laughs> <laughs> because it's so unique i mean this is this is up there on on the bizarre food list of the world mm, okay? all the time isn't it on those international sites it, it really is because let's go ahead and just throw it out there uh sharks and skates do not urinate uh like a lot of animals in the animal kingdom really they, really i yeah. did not know this do other fish like do that but... they they urinate through their skin okay okay wow and and so you know urine has ammonia yes and and in the fermentation process as this animal uh ferments it's releasing urine through its skin wow but that ties in to what's so interesting uh, how it was discovered uh -huh. okay so like 400 years ago no five five six hundred years ago yeah um there were japanese pirates okay all right yeah and they were coming around the islands of south korea uh-huh and it got dangerous for folks that lived on the islands sure and they were catching a lot of skate uh-huh normally to eat in other ways yeah but then they'd have to move up river to someplace safer okay and they found all their fish went bad of course except for the skate oh. because the urine is coming through the skin just naturally and preserving it naturally wow as they would come up river of course with no refrigeration wow. yada 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 and and it was still palatable they could still get protein but it has this hong oh, <laughs> thing going on uh it's strong comes it's strong through your nose it. right boy oh boy i'll never forget the first time i tasted it i'm surprised that they had that those villages and thought it was okay like i would have thought the smell is oh we've got to throw that out like that's hey, not man, okay if you're hungry if you're hungry you're hungry wow. and if it it doesn't kill somebody and then that's that's the other thing is it becomes addictive 
Mm. It really does become. Folks here will say that after you have it three or four times, yeah. you can get addicted. I know many people. Well, not many. <laughs> Let me clarify that. Yeah, like a small proportion of my foreign friends who've eaten it because of like a broadcast, or、mm-hmm. you know, they were dared to. And they didn't like it at first, but now they have their favorite, like tangol, their regular place to go and have hongo. That's it. And they won't have it like every day or every week, but like、yeah. every few months, they really crave it and、wow. they go and eat、yeah. it. It's unbelievable. Welcome to Arirang Radio. If you are in Jeju, eighty-eight point seven in Jeju City. Eighty-eight point one in Sogipu City. One hundred one point nine in the Daejeong area. Uh, we do have lots of messages about today's dish, hongo, with its kind of ammonia reek to it. And Leon says, "Is it quite like wasabi? Maybe a block nose will be cleared after eating it." Beyond, <laughs> it's beyond wasabi, <laughs> but yes,、yeah, a little similar. Mustard is like an English mustard, right? Like, right? Right? I love that. Yeah. Love, so, every time I go、uh, to a, a nice chobot place or kind of a Korean sushi place,、mm. and they have sang wasabi or fresh wasabi,、yes. the actual root that's ground down, I'll always overdo it at least one bite、okay. in the meal just for fun. <laughs> yeah. You know, just to like get it. Yeah. Because you know? it it is kind of fun, and hongo is. There,、mm-hmm. but it's it's funkier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is a good analogy. That well, I'm saying it's good, but I don't think I've properly had hongo to be honest. But yeah, English mustard when you have too much and that stinging thing、oh, in、yeah. your nose. Oh yeah, it makes your eyes water and everything. And, <laughs> totally. And, and I've heard stories of people who eating eating hongo and that's happening, right? Yeah, the eyes watering. Well, you even you're there's a certain way you're supposed to eat hongo, and that's you know take a breath. Uh huh. Breathe out、okay. and take the bite because、oh. if you breathe in、yeah. through your mouth、uh-huh. as you put it in and chew it, it it'll really catch oh wow、out. it'll really you'll be like, oh, oh. oh goodness <laughs> what you want is to breathe out through your nose、uh-huh. as you're、eating. as you're chewing it is、yeah. even、and、a breathing technique to eating this. I've not heard that with a food before. That's unbelievable.、Uh, Miss Andriani from Indonesia saying, "Why on sagok dramas the historical ones? I wonder. Do I keep seeing people in the Joseon dynasty eating honga while drinking soju?" Well, Ryan explained that it's been around for those hundreds of、uh, years. What,、right? what I found was like thirteen <gasps> fifty. Yeah, around.、Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Way back to then, when the pirate, the Japanese pirates, were、uh-huh. sailing the seas. Wow. So there's a silver lining to、mm. pirate invasions, right?、Uh, and I. Do you believe this is something that people say goes well with soju? Like maybe she's seen. Yes,、it. absolutely. You know, any strong flavor <laughs> for that matter. When you know, in the in the culinary world, whenever you're questioning your, a recipe,、mm. you know, or thinking about a recipe or creating something new, if you have one strong flavor, yeah, then you can have other strong flavors. Okay. If your main protein is a fish, a、mm. white fish, a light. You know, you're not gonna put a ton of rosemary on it, right? <laughs> Because one will overpower the other.、Uh-huh. So when you get something like hongo, a strong flavor, then you can put well, what's the, you know samhap, yeah, right? So samhap is the three things that go together、mm-hmm. for with your or two more things with hongo, yeah, and it's a much easier way to enjoy it. They're、uh, all strong flavors. They're all strong flavors. Okay, you've got the fattiness of the bosom,、mm-hmm. okay, and that fat helps balance out other flavors, like <laughs> calm them down.、Uh-huh. And then you've got the mugunji or the really sour kimchi, yeah, that strong flavors. <laughs> and when you put that together, the hongo then is kind of balanced out with other things. Wow, with the extra glass of soju, bish bash bosh. There you go. There、oh, you that's go. interesting. So when you've got strong flavors, you can fight them with other strong flavors, like fight fire with fire, kind exactly, of thing. Exactly, exactly. A good rule of thumb. Yeah.、Uh, Will from Canada saying, "I wonder if it's worse than the Swedish Sir Stroming that I've seen on YouTube, and people have just thrown up even from the smell, and I'm guessing the taste is even worse." I re- I really want to try that someday. Is that、I've、like never... a fish as well or something? Yeah. So apparently, one day a year or one season a year in Sweden, it's popular to go outside, have a picnic, yeah, and and open these cans of fermented fish,、wow. and I. I've never tried it. I'm afraid. I, I tried to get a friend to bring me some back from Sweden, but he's like, "No, nobody eats that. Nobody touches that. We can't do that." I'm like, "Oh, come on, we want to see what it is." 
but yes, it must be kind of similar. Okay. Um, I've had some some Vietnamese hot sauces that were fermented with fish in them. That's mm. uh, really up there, funky, uh, but less ammonia. And then I've heard of an Icelandic shark fermented Whoa. for like a whole year <gasps> uh, in really cold temperatures. Interesting. And and I think that one might be the most similar. Oh. Of course, I've, I haven't had the opportunity to try it, but they do speak of the strong ammonia there as well. Uh-huh. And so, and then shark and skate are same family. So I imagine that one would be very similar. Interesting. Uh, Leon wondering, would it be good for a hangover then as it would wake you up immediately? They say so, yes. Really? So we should mention that, you know, it's not a large portion of the Korean population that eats this. M- MHJ is on board saying, yep, yeah, it's amazing that foreigners eat it because I'm not on board with it yet. There you go. <laughs> exactly. So I I would say, you know, around 20% or less okay. uh, would have this on a regular basis. I'm I'm in the, I'm, I'm on the edge of the spectrum i'm good you know maybe once a year you know something like that but if any friend asked hey let's go get this let's go get hongo today i'd be like yeah sure why not you know it's not like you uh, disgusted by it not at all not at all it's just not something i really (sighs) seek out i have i guess i haven't gotten that addiction to it yet sure Uh, Sherry from Canada saying, I feel like the urine and ammonia side of this is not selling me on trying <laughs> skates. Oh, you should hear this description I found. Let me let me find this description. It's hilarious. Uh, it's worse Sometimes than that. Sometimes it might be. This is a description I found online. Okay. okay. Uh, one might describe it as a heady mix of public toilet and <laughs> wet laundry left unattended for days. Wow. And a hard to swallow texture of chewy flesh and crunchy cartilage. Obviously, someone who's not the biggest fan, but you know yeah. what they're talking about, right? Because yeah. sometimes when you walk into a public toilet, there is that stinging of your nose <laughs> smell, you know, from not just the urine, but also those blocks, those chemical blocks, right? Nobody's ever going to eat this. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that is someone who's, you know, trying to put you off a little bit more. Yeah. And like you said, once you get hooked to it, and i got to say, again, I don't eat hongo, but I do like that kind of nose tingling smell of those blocks in the toilet urinals they're <laughs> addictive like seriously you smell them there must be some chemicals in there and i don't mind like staying a little longer oh, like in that public toilet oh boy oh boy you're uh, killing me you're yeah, killing it, it's it, so funny um it is weird mm. some of the things we do and and we already described why this happened i mean the, these pe- people needed food mm-hmm. and they found this interesting relationship of this fish yeah. where it preserves itself naturally that's a, so and they're then, not like adding ingredients to preserve this these days i well. i've heard some of the really really good places or highly prized places mm-hmm. around the city or, or down actually where it's more famous down in mokpo uh-huh. they will take the straw um from the rice or yeah. or actually barley uh-huh. and they'll lay it in that um just the, the fish itself nothing yeah yeah okay. and it's the right temperature uh-huh. um and then the fish being from that area yeah. uh, the islands off of of mokpo uh it's cold water there wow. and there's a harvest time we're in the season of it right now mm. it's november to march okay um those cold water the texture of them uh, apparently the ones that come from Chile or other places in the world aren't as good and people oh. can definitely tell that a lot of restaurants in Mokpo will not sell the imported ones oh, at I all. See. They only want to do the locals. And Korea goes through 11,000 tons of hongo <gasps> every year. Wow. So people are enjoying it. And, and you know, I, the first time I ever got it, I was down there near Mokpo mm-hmm. and I got, actually I wasn't there for that, I was there for Gulbi. Uh, the little fish. Oh, I don't know the English name. I'm Yellow afraid, but... Corvina, maybe. Uh, way to go. Maybe. I think so. that one okay. out. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Okay. So I was having a gulbi jongshik and mm-hmm. all these things come out. And one of the panchan was a hongo that had it like a yam yam, like a seasoning on it. Oh, it wow. Red. And I just grabbed a big bite, not yeah. having any clue. And I was just like, whoa. <laughs> and I and I went up, got up and asked the people at the restaurant, yeah. what is this thing I'm eating? <laughs> And they said that that was fermented for, they said, 13 years. What? I'm not kidding. Uh, and I was like, what? Really? I, maybe they were just, Playing. they were messing with me. I don't know. But they said it had been fermented. It was in a hangari for 13 years. That would be insane. I mean, we're not talk, talking about that as a regular thing. It's not. 
I've not actually seen it ever, be- ever before or since. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and f- how long are we talking for fermenting these things? Because we were talking about the crab last week. You know, three to seven days for right. the soy sauce. Is right. it similar for a hongo? It's a month. A month. Yeah. Traditionally, wow. it's about a month. And it's yeah. just okay to be left like that at the right temperatures. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and then you're after it's fermented. Uh, a lot. Most of the skate is cut away. Okay. You're going for the just the right size piece in mm. the kind of wings of the oh, skate wow. but the tips are too narrow that gets tossed yeah the skin all gets tossed wow um and and i guess through the fermentation the cartilage softens because you'll get this kind of chewy crunch to it but not cartilage. so much like okay. a bone wow yeah. that's yeah. interesting your daily dose of korea, korea? Right now. Listen up. arirang radio it's part three of Dish of the Day with Chef Ryan talking about Hong o today, the fermented raw skate. Uh, Jennifer Draper says, my af- appetite is officially gone <laughs> after all this talk. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> uh, Sherry Osborne saying, I have COVID and meat tastes weirdly like soap. I wonder if this skate would be strong enough to cure my taste There buds. you go. It'll wake you up for sure. Worth yeah. a try. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, you know, when I'm when I'm at Gadak Market and I walk by those vendors, mm-hmm. uh if if I catch their eye, I'll be yeah. like, oh, uh, can I can I get a little sample? Oh. And they'll always give me this little piece. Oh nice. And it's kind of fun just to wake up your senses. Like like wasabi, you know, kind of yeah. like the spicy mustard. Yeah. Uh, it definitely <laughs> there's something about it, man. It it really does um there's a lot of fermented foods. Uh, do something to you and and it becomes addictive mm. you, you you know you ate something <laughs> <You're definitely, laughs> after you chew that you know that there's something different yeah you know? it hits a spot doesn't it for the yeah. longest time you know kimchi has been that for many koreans right there you go yeah. you know craving kimchi it is obviously because it's tasty but i think there must be an addictive element to that right totally totally yeah, so good yeah. um huh. Leon was asking from Singapore, what is the most delicious part of Hongo then? Well, as Ryan described, you're just getting, you're not getting the whole thing. It doesn't come out like whole. And we're talking about skate. Skate looks very much like a stingray, right? Right, right, okay. right. The so wings. You're yeah. not like seeing that in its no, glory or no, anything. No, not at all. And not it's not live in a tank like some other seafood, no, right? No, 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 no. They couldn't do that. It takes a month to ferment. So yeah. you, um, what you see and uh, at the restaurants or online, people will order this to be shipped to their house, um, is, uh, let's see, it's... It's done a lot like like the tuna is in those mm-hmm. size pieces, you know, like Bite you're having size. sashimi. Uh, but there's definitely the lines. Um, the If you can imagine, the bones or the cartilage, I mean, through the skate wings are uh-huh. kind of kind of like a bird, you know, in a oh. sense. Or like, there there's a lot of them. And so, so you're crunching through them. Yes. Okay. And and through the fermentation, they get softer. Because I've had skate that was just sautéed in, uh-huh. in Mexico. Yeah. Um, and it was very similar to catfish. Lot you got to evade those bones or the cartilage uh-huh. there. Um, but in the case of, of hongo, you just chew right through and it gives this nice little crunch to it. Mm. Um, God, I'm craving hongo. Right now. <laughs> yeah. Mission accomplished. And talking more about sum up, because that's the way it's almost always going to get to you, right? Sum up if you're Most eating it. of the restaurants, uh, yes, offer a, a sum up. Otherwise, you're just going to have chojang, uh, vinegar, red pepper you sauce. Dip it in that. Dip it in that. And that's you might it. have some chilies around. Again, okay. strong flavors with strong flavors. So so you might have some garlic stems. I've seen that with it. Uh, some scallion, the the bases of the scallions, the, the stronger part, the white uh-huh. part. Uh, a little of the green. And a bowl um, of rice to sure, go with it. Sure, 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 sure. Uh, sometimes, but not always. Okay. Uh, yeah. And it is very much a, a man, a manly man food here in Korea. You <laughs> to know? go and have the hong o. Uh, I'd like to see statistics of consumption over the years mm. if it's if it's gone down. Uh, of course, we're getting more of an aged, uh, aging population, so maybe it's going up. Interesting, yeah. yeah. And the sum up. Like it sounds like that could work for people who are maybe 
more averse to it in the beginning. Good point. That would be the belly, that right? would be the gateway. You got bosom, okay. which is uh, a braised or pressure cooked pork belly. Uh -huh. Lots of delicious fat on there. Yeah, and then wrap it with a mugunji or a sour kimchi leaf with the hongo like on top of or below. Oh yeah, and then yeah. that's it. There's no like lettuce wrap around it. Right, that's right, it. right. So one big bite, and it is a big <laughs> bite. Uh, we're, we're kind of famous for that over here it in this part be. of the world. But, uh, but, you know, honestly, when I go have hongo, mm -hmm. I, I want to have hongo. I don't need the sum up. Oh, but really? Yeah. Yeah. If you're going to do it, just, just do, do it. it. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does the sum up, you can still definitely taste the ammonia and the hongo in there, right? You better believe it. But yeah, it's if it's just, any good, if it's, it's just a real... confused a little bit with the exactly pork and the yeah kimchi. calm down i'm trying to imagine down. if i'd like it or not because i love pork belly with kimchi even mm -hmm. mugunji mm -hmm. but if you're putting all in there am i gonna be all right with that well you could always try a half piece you know and 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 lead into it but uh yeah i'm gonna have to go get this soon i gotta find somebody that'll go with me because like you can't really go alone yeah right <laughs> these these restaurants are not usually the places where you're having humbuck by there, yourself there's right? not an individual portion at any restaurant i've ever seen it's um, coming out in a, in like maybe a whole skate is coming to your oh, table oh i don't know about that no. skate are pretty big okay. man um you probably only need <sighs> you probably get eight 10 portions out of an average size wow state really one. yeah because you don't need a lot of it uh -huh. so yeah uh, yeah, so yeah, when yeah. you're having one portion which isn't an individual thing maybe 200 300 grams tops probably 250 <gasps> grams and that's yeah, it something like that that's it yeah. it's going to be hard to stomach too much more of that i don't know about stomach but i mean it's it's some strong powerful <laughs> stuff i don't you know you have your panchan with it and, and yeah, that's all you that's need. enough mm -hmm, mm -hmm. wow is this one of the foods in korea and they seem to be many, many more than in the West, that is said to, like, boost your virality or your health or you something know like that. Really? Yeah, you know it, yeah. <laughs> it's it's definitely good for man. Okay. Um, but, but, you know, of course, seafood, you know, mm. omegas, and it is good for health, yeah. sure. Uh, and it all just stems back to being hungry and and all your other fish went bad as you were escaping the pirates. Yeah. And, and this, was this the is only all one. you had left. Wow. You've left your home. You've left your little farm on the island and gone up river. You don't have anything else. Wow. You know, but the skate <laughs> preserved itself. And Thanks you to have its protein. <laughs> yeah. If you have protein. And then that developed into this culture wow. uh, and tradition. So down, if you're down in Mokpo, yeah. now I now I'm gonna have to go to Mokpo <laughs> before before the season ends in March. Mm. I'm gonna have to go down to Mokpo and go hit up some of the top restaurants and get get the real traditional. You can uh, get this all year round, right? Absolutely, like yeah. with most things these days. But yeah. the season is until March. Yeah, that's when they're catching the best ones, okay. the cold weather ones, yeah. And there are no other creatures like this that have their urine kind of self-ferment, though. Apparently sharks, and, okay. and, or some shark. I, I'm not the right person to ask on that one, that's I'm afraid. But so yeah, interesting. Skate, definitely. And, and, you know, there's so many skate, when I'm on beaches in Mexico, yeah. um, you know, they're right there in the surf. And they look like shark tails, yeah. uh, the tails on them with the, wow. with the dorsal fin. And and you're like ah, but they're they're not going after you, you know. They're just Homeless. chasing little fish that are there. You in don't the surf. see them in the sea here in Korea like that, like you do in Mexico. You, you don't. Well, you're I've right. Never yeah. seen that. But yeah. like you said, they're caught off the coast of Mokpo, and as with everything in Korea. The Korean version just so happens to be the best version, right? <laughs> it's something, man. They're really not enjoyed that much around the world. Probably someday we'll have to start eating those. And, and you know, fish uh, brokers <laughs> will convince us that it's amazing. And you watch. It'll happen someday because it'll be plentiful and cheap and other stuff will start to dwindle. Well, if uh, Kanjang Kejang proved to be more delicious than you ever imagined after hearing about it last week, this is the next step. Go and try some hongo, right? It, it, you know, Gilbert, be adventurous. Check yeah, it out. Absolutely. We're not saying you're going to fall in love with it, but yeah, as, as Ryan said, maybe once in your life. Uh, thank you so much, Ryan, for coming in today. Uh, I'm actually going to be away for a couple of weeks, so I will see you back in a few weeks' time. You'll be in safe and capable hands. Have a lovely trip. Thank you very much. I might bring you back some British mustard. Ooh, Who knows? Fingers yes, crossed. the powder <laughs> kind. Why not? Okie dokie. You've been listening to the Thursday segment, Dish of the Day with Chef Ryan on Hashtag Daily Cake.